Welcome to Home Building 101. I'm Lori, and today I'm going to be showing you all the stuff that goes inside the walls. Last week you saw that the exterior and interior walls were framed up. Now it's important to get all the mechanical trades inside the walls so that way they're not, um, so that way they're all there for when drywall is installed. Uh, you have access to your electricity and your plumbing and air conditioning and all that good stuff. So the first thing that I'll show you is the plumbing. Um, last time we saw the plumbing, it was, um, you'll see here, let's walk around. Over here is a bathroom, so it's a good example. Last time we saw the plumbing, you had these little stub-ups just coming out of the concrete. Now you could see they form them up through the walls. This is going to be a wall that's covered by drywall, and they're coming out. So that way once the wall has drywall on it, you'll still be able to access the plumbing. So since this is a bathroom, you've got the tub here, which is installed. It's got a cover on here to make sure it doesn't get damaged. And you've got the toilet here. This big pipe is the sewer, so when you flush the toilet, all the water goes out there. And the skinny pipe is the fresh water, so that's where it refills. You've got here, um, this is for the tub shower. You know when you turn the faucet and you get hot and cold water? This is where you'll turn and this is where the hot and cold water will mix. And the shower head will be up there. Over here you've got the sink and you can see you've got hot and cold water and then when the water goes down the drain it always goes in the thicker pipe so it doesn't get clogged and you'll notice the sewer water is always underneath the fresh water so that way if there is a leak it doesn't contaminate the fresh water. Let's see some other interesting plumbing stuff around the house. Um, you'll notice all this purple stuff here seals the pipe to help so it doesn't leak. And also, you'll notice wherever the pipes are in the wall, they put a metal plate, so that way when they're nailing into the walls, they won't accidentally nail the pipe. Over here, you have a special hose for the refrigerator. I think this is where the refrigerator goes. That's for the fresh water to be able to, you know how in your refrigerator you have, um, you can sometimes put your glass in the refrigerator and water comes out? This will connect to your refrigerator, so that way you can see that. Here, you can see so we're in a two-story house, so you need a way to get all your plumbing um, and electrical, for that matter, up to the second floor. So you can see here, this is an extra thick wall, and you've got these big pipes running all the way up through the um, wall, through the floor of the second story, and then will be piped up to where the bathrooms are up there. So you do need a place to get all the plumbing, and this here is a sleeve that has all the electrical wires that will go up to the second floor. So after plumbing, um, you also want to put in uh, HVAC into the house. HVAC stands for Heating, Ventilation, and Air Conditioning. It's what keeps your house nice and cool during the summer, and um, right now during the winter you might want to put the heat on and that uh, does that as well. So um, you want to make sure that all of the piping for your air conditioning system is in the walls before you drywall. And uh, so one thing that is installed at this stage is your air handler closet right here. Now some homes have the air handler actually outside, but in order for our homes to be more energy efficient, we put our air handler closets inside the house so that way no um, air leaks out into the garage. It all stays within a conditioned space. And um, there's a whole system of the unit bringing in air from the house, cooling it or heating it, and then distributing it throughout the house. You'll so see there's a box here, and that box is connected to these um, almost space-like tubes. Everything you can see has kind of like a tin foil finish, and that's to help keep it insulated. Uh, the HVAC uh, installers, they help make sure our homes are nice and energy efficient. They also do our testing for energy efficiency too. And they have to calculate um, all of the windows and doors um, in the house, all the openings, and 
different uses for the room, such as like the kitchen, you'll be doing a lot of cooking, or an office with a lot of computers. They take all that into consideration when they're determining how they will distribute the air throughout the house, so that way it's a nice balanced flow. You don't want to walk into a house and be really cold in one room and really hot in the next room. So it's got to be distributed nice and evenly, which um, they take into consideration not only the space of the room, but also what the room is used for and the number of windows and doors. So this is where the air handler unit is housed, and it's a big fan that will help circulate the air throughout the house. And um, you can see as we walk around that they have gone ahead and put in all the tubes to distribute throughout to all the rooms and openings for where the vents will be, where the air will come out and be sucked back in to the unit. So um, in addition to the plumbing and the HVAC, you also have a lot of electrical work that is put into the house at this time. And uh, so it's really important that you can work well with others because sometimes you've got the uh, plumbers and electricians and the HVAC workers all in the house together. Um, so it's really good that uh, people can communicate and uh, not step on each other's toes. Uh, electrical, you can see right now there's a lot of wires that are in the walls and this is what a typical um, switch will look like. So when you walk into your room this is where you switch on and off the lights and you can see all the little wires in there. Um, that help make that happen and then you can see in the ceiling you've got the little boxes for the recessed cans um, and if you were to put in ceiling speakers you'd see the wiring for that. We also have the wiring here to all the outlets so you can plug in all of your chargers and TVs. Every room has an outlet for um, also for cable and internet and telephone, so you can have access to all of those. Uh, we also make sure when we're framing the walls at this stage, we put wood block wherever someone might want to mount something heavy on a wall, like a flat screen TV, because you don't want to necessarily drill into drywall. You want to be able to drill into something that's secure that could hold up your um, your picture or your TV. So we try to put metal. We try to put wood blocking where we feel people would most likely do those things. And let's see what other. So you'll notice that um, the wires throughout the house are different colors. You've got white here and yellow here. The different colors represent different thicknesses, and usually the thicker the wire, the more powerful it is. So. Um, You'll also see that we, they put these little red protectors so that way the wires don't get cut in the walls. We're now in the garage and in the garage you've got, this is what will eventually be the electric panel. And um, you might be familiar with uh, an electric panel in your home with a bunch of different switches that turns up the lights on and off in different rooms. And this is where all of the electricity and power throughout the house is distributed. So you can see here all of these different wires. Um, different colors, remember, represent different thicknesses and powers. Will um, all come to this box to be controlled and then they're distributed throughout the house. This is in between the first and second floor. So this is actually the floor trusses um, of the home. And you can see here some of the HVAC uh, and also all the electric wires that are running under the floor to get to the second story as well as some of the wiring for the ceiling recess cans for the first story. And um, if you look over that way, you could see a big plumbing pipe there for uh, sewer water to come from the second floor to travel down to the first floor and out to the main underground sewer. So there's lots of interesting things in the walls and in the floors. You can see actually over here, one thing that the HVAC people do is they seal around all of the boxes and pipes and everything to make sure that no, wa no air leaks, which helps make it really energy efficient. Here we're in the master bathroom, which is actually on the second floor in this home. You've got a nice corner top, which has uh, lots of plumbing going to it, and it also has an electric motor for jets, which is installed this time too. And in order to make sure that the shower on the second floor is nice and sealed, um, 
and as front leaks, you've got the shower floor all set up here by the plumbers. And the plumbers will go ahead and fill all the pipes with water to make sure it's pressurized and they have a little gauge that tells you whether um, it's pressurized and if the nod, if the, if the tick on the gauge spins, you know that that means water is leaving the pipes and there's a leak. And so they try to make sure that there's no leaks in the house before the drywall is installed because then it's easier to fix. So you notice how there's a tinfoil covering um, for the, all the HVAC pipes. We also have a radiant roof barrier, which is something that the framers install, and that also helps keep the house nice and insulated by reflecting all of the heat and light away from the house um, to make it more energy efficient. So one other thing that goes in the house at this stage of construction is TAX. TAX is something special that we put in all of our homes as standard. Um, and what it is, is there are little tubes that go in the walls and it's for pest control. And so these little tubes get put in the walls and they, uh, there's an outlet outside your home so that way once you're living in your home, an exterminator can come and treat your house for insects without actually having to enter your house. So all the chemicals will actually stay in the walls and target the areas where insects may be. Um, usually they're common in wet areas like kitchens and bathrooms. So there's little perforated holes in the tubes that when you put the chemicals through um, an outlet outside, they uh, are distributed throughout the walls of your home and they actually stay in the walls and don't actually come into your house. So you don't need to be home, you don't need to be worried about your pets or um, if you have little kids at home uh, interacting with the chemicals because it's all safe in the walls and uh, you don't even need to be home. So that's a really convenient feature that we include and so that's put in the home at this time too.